Julia, thank you so very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, and fellow travelers, welcome to the 89 plus marathon. <clears throat> and as Julia said, this is the eight marathon. And it all started when, in 2006, Julia and I started our collaboration. And we were wondering, because obviously, the invention of Julia's pavilion had occurred in 2000 with Zaha Hadid, which is amazing, because here we are, um, 13 years later, in the permanent structure, the new space by Zaha Hadid. And uh, we are always wondering, <clears throat> in terms of uh, what could be a format which would actually bring all the disciplines together in conjunction with the pavilion. We are thinking, Actually, this observation, whenever we would do an architecture talk, the architecture world would pop up when we do a science talk. The science world would come when we have an artist speak. The art world would come. What could be a format where we would somehow create a pool of knowledge? And that was the beginning of the marathon. It all started with interviews in 2006 with Rem Kohlhaas and Olafur Eliasson came in 2007. We felt we had spoken too much and it would be time to experiment. And that was the beginning of the experiment marathon. And ever since it's unfolded with manifestos, poetry, map, garden, a memory marathon in 2012. This year's marathon, the 89 plus marathon, has been inspired by the new digital and multidisciplinary platform that we're launching here at uh, the new Serpentine Sackler Gallery. It's also inspired by, and is very strong part of a project that we co-founded with Simon Gaste, the director of the Swiss Institute, called 89 plus. The 89 plus marathon brings emerging practitioners born in or after 89 together with influential thinkers of all generation. The voices of this 89 plus generation are only starting to be heard, even though incredibly they make up nearly half of the world's population. We chose 1989 as the beginning of a new era because it was a highly significant year. It was the year in which the Berlin Wall came down, marking the start of the post-Cold War period. It was the year also of mass demonstrations in Tiananmen Square and their violent suppression. It was the year in which the World Wide Web was introduced, as Julia mentioned, in the beginning of the universal availability of the internet. It was the year in which the first global positioning system satellite was launched into orbit. At this turning point in history, urgent questions presented themselves that have been so crucial in forming uh, today's world. I want to say a few words more about how it all started. And one of the things of this long-term project, 89 plus, has all to do with Edouard Lisson, the late Edouard Lisson and his idea of mondialité, which is so difficult to translate into English. Maybe one could call it mondiality. Um, that sort of whole idea of uh, an enormous potential of global dialogue, which we have now, and obviously also the dangers of the homogenizing forces of extreme globalization we have, and how we can every day actually engage with this global dialogue by producing difference. So the daily reading, actually, of Edouard Lisson is very inspiring. And this idea also, what Lisson always says, that the local research is so important. So whenever there is an iteration, and that was particularly important for this so far biggest project of 89 plus, the marathon, a very strong local research in London, where we found such an amazing generation of new artists. There were many inspirations for 89 plus. The artist Ryan Tricartin was a strong inspiration. He once said, the people born in the 90s are amazing. I can't wait until they all start to make art. And that was three years ago. Now the moment has come. As Julia says, Richard Hamilton, <clears throat> there would never have been this project without him. Uh, this marathon is dedicated to the memory of Richard Hamilton. And Rita Dona asked us to tell us all um, how important for her this name 89 plus is, because Richard died actually in 2011 at the age of 89, and 89 plus means that it all continues. The thinking of Richard Hamilton is so inspiring, so many young arts are inspired. And Richard once told Julia and me, when we installed his exhibition at the Serpentine, that he feels that it's so important that art institutions now do again what happened when he was very young. When he started, he said he was in his early 20s, there was the situation that really institutions supported artists at the very, very beginning of their trajectories. And that somehow sank in, and I think has been a very important trigger. Another trigger, and that's why it's so great that Steffi Czerny is with us, was DLD. Because it was in DLD in Munich that for the first time, um, 89 plus then began. Everything started with DLD in January. It was a panel, and Steffi will later today introduced this whole DLD vision. Julia gave all the thank yous. It's a very big uh, collaboratorium, but I would very much like to thank Julia <clears throat> for everything, for her vision, for the amazing dialogue, uh, and there would have never been marathons uh, without her invention of the pavilion, so thank you so, so much. I would also like to thank, of course, all the participants, um, the amazing teams who worked on that, and then, um, 
the advisors, because the project um, is very strongly inspired by many of the advisors with whom we have conversations with, Nadia Agripopolo, Hua al Kazimi, John Brockman, Sarah Jane Blakemore, Julie Bukopsa, James Bridal, Harry Berg, Bruno Scheschel, Hermann Chong, Steffi Czerny, Andrea Di Baccio, Olafur Eliasson, Beatrice Galilei, Martino Gampo, Jefferson Heck, Molly Hawkins, Carson Höller, Emily King, Aaron Koblin, Kevin McGarry, Lily McMenami, Luna Miguel, Uning, Hela Paul, Sean O'Hagan, Caius Parson, Alex Poots, Asad Raza, David Rowenweil, Shaki, Thea Slotto, Ryan Trekartin, Rosemary Trockel, Dana Iago, Elise van Middelheim, Cedric Villani have all been instrumental in the research of this process. We spoke every day with Kevin McGarry. He's our super advisor, we can say, and he's so influential on this project that we have so far not found yet a title for him in the project. So many, many thanks to Kevin. Um, I would also like to mention this magazine, because this magazine has done the discrete. Julia mentioned the Rebaudengo Award. Uh, we're going to launch um, actually tomorrow in the panel, and that was a collaboration with this magazine, and you can all see the discrete which led to this process. Um, and uh, last but not least, a quote from John Kenneth Galbraith, which Tino Segal felt was important for all of you to hear in the context of 89 plus. John Kenneth Galbraith wrote, change comes not from men and women changing their minds, but from the change from one generation to the next. And now a very warm welcome to Simon Castel. Hello. Um, first and foremost, we wanted to express our infinite gratitude um, to the inimitable team of the Serpentine Galleries, who, uh, besides uh, tirelessly working on this marathon, also managed to open this incredible building by Zaha Hadid, in which we're all tonight. Um, on behalf of 89 Plus, we wanted to thank our partners who have enabled this year of research across the world, um, in particular the Luma Foundation, the DLD Conference, who hosted the first 89 Plus public event in Munich, as well as all the other institutions who have helped so much uh, with the project, uh, including Palazzo Grassi, the Art Basel Salon Series, Caldor Public Art Projects, the Innovation Festival of Bolzano Bozen, the Park Avenue Armory, and MoMA PS1. 89 Plus was born out of the fascination that Hans Rich and I share for impossible projects, but also, and most importantly, about how the short history of the internet has affected our daily lives in ways that we couldn't have imagined 10 years ago. It is virtually impossible to imagine what contemporary art would look like without the wealth of knowledge resting our, at our fingertips. Conversely, many of the conversations we've had with the protagonists of 89 Plus have highlighted the fact that more and more online documentation is not only often the prime d destination to art which art is produced, but also at times the reason itself. It is only since 2005 that videos can be uploaded by anyone and shared with everyone around the world in an instant on YouTube. This is one, and this is only one of the many examples of the way our relationship to images has been revolutionized since the invention of the World Wide Web in 1989. As Tim Berners-Lee wrote when he first began working on and I quote him, a software program that eventually gave rise to the idea of the World Wide Web, he named it Enquire. It resonates with the very spirit of 89 Plus, which as a long-term project, still in, in its infancy, because we're always talking about long durational project, we're thinking about a 10 to 20, even 30 year scale as we're looking at a generational framework. Um, it's still in its infancy, we are in a phase of inquiry of gathering information about this generation much more than trying to define it. This investigative approach is reflective in this edition of the Marathon, which also reflects the transdisciplinarity of 89 Plus and its open-endedness, bringing together an incredibly broad number of luminaries whose work is drafting our future. As Tim Berners-Lee wrote, the internet brings the workings of society closer to the workings of our minds. And among the great minds gathered here today and tomorrow for the Serpentine Gallery's 89 Plus Marathon, we're very grateful for the participation of close to 80 visionaries from diverse yet interconnected fields. And now we will hear the Serpentine Gallery's curator of digital, Ben Vickers, who along with devising and curating the 89 Plus Clubhouse, which is the online, the online platform of the Marathon, with, he has, with Oliver Roberts, 
realized for the marathon a visualization of the way in which the 89 plus network has developed and gathered participants over the past few months. Thank you.